Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Joining us here on Real Agriculture, we have uh, Dieter Schwartz with uh, a new title, Dieter, a Market Development Manager for Corn and Soybeans with Cantera here Correct. in, uh, in yes. Western Canada. Uh, we're talking corn yield potential. We uh, s- harvest is still weeks, um, month or month or two away here in uh, in the west, but we want to have an idea of, of what we can expect for uh, for corn. How are things looking this fall? Well, we certainly had a fantastic year for corn. Uh, in some ways, much to the uh, chagrin of uh, some of the folks that are uh, trying to harvest cereals right now. Um, I've always uh, jokingly said, and then this year I'm feeling a little sorry for having said uh, that if you want to have a good uh, corn and soybean yield you might have to put up with number two wheat and uh, this year we're certainly getting the August rains that are very conducive to an excellent corn and soybean yield unfortunately it's hampering uh, harvesting efforts on the cereal side Um, however in terms of corn uh, we're looking really good Um, we are about a week ahead of normal in terms of heat units and uh, certainly uh, in terms of our corn hybrids that's favoring our full season hybrids and uh, it's setting us up for uh, uh, some potentially good yields Um, but of course uh, as I always say um, you want to be careful sometimes that uh, you're careful in your predictions and uh, that you wait until harvest and the final exam uh, you know is uh, still a month away so Uh, Having said that, it's always a great exercise this time of year to uh, look at the uh, look at the crop um, and most importantly of course is to evaluate a stand. Um, I always like to evaluate stand fairly early on just to uh, get a really good idea how we did in terms of planting and in terms of our uh, our season and if there was any other issues that affected stand and plant health. Um, But uh, once again now is also a good time to uh, to just do another check on that uh, population and of course we need to have a population count in order to do our, our yield estimates so what is that formula how do we uh, how do we figure out what uh, what kind of yield potential there is at this time um, so there are many different uh, many different places you can go online to, uh, to find different charts um, as a matter of fact I sometimes use the Manitoba pulse and soybean uh, grower um, app that they have to determine uh, population um, but there's many uh, many charts here in this case we have a uh, we have a 30 inch um, spacing and uh, that's a very easy uh, 17 feet 5 inches uh, not 17 and a half feet but 17 feet 5 inches uh, is one one thousandth of an acre and of course then the uh, the math becomes very easy to determine the number of plants uh, per acre that we have uh, from then we multiply by the number of kernels on the cob and then we just take a simple uh, average of 90,000 kernels per bushel to come up with a bushel per acre. So once again uh, on corn as I mentioned it's just a very uh, straightforward formula. Keep in mind that this is an estimate. Um, actual results will, will vary. Um, so it's very simple the number of cobs which is your plant population in an ideal world you will have one cob per plant um, times the number of kernels so you count the number of rounds by the length and you divide it by 90,000 uh, that will give you your uh, your yield so what I did here is I uh, and of course you don't just pick one uh, you try to pick at least 10 and uh, you average them out so I picked our full season uh, hybrid favorite here this is a 4939 G2 rib and uh, so we've got a full 18 round and I, I prefer to uh, count the kernels on the butt end here uh, and I usually just mark it with one finger and then go around and count uh, so this one's 18 round and uh, in an ideal world you will count the length before you break it in half and uh, so I usually ignore these really large round uh, kernels at the end so I will start about here and I'll ignore the ones at the top here because they may or may not fill. So in this case, uh, much like your favorite cooking shows, I've already done this. Um, And uh, so I got 18 round, as I mentioned, by 35 long. So the way the math works then, um, and I've already done the uh, the plant count, the stand count. Uh, We were a little short of what I would like to see population, but not. Probably not unfamiliar with some of the viewers 
Uh, we ended up with about 29,000. As I said, that was as a result of uh, probably not planting for a higher population and having some really trying conditions here in the spring. So 29,000 is not, uh, not an unreasonable number. Um, 18 round by 35 long divided by 90,000. And as I said, we came out at around approximately 203 bushels an acre potential here. Um, as I said, we're still a month or more away, but uh, you know, it, it gives you a really quick and easy way to uh, just uh, see what's out there in your field. And uh, once again, more importantly, it, uh, it gets you another uh, time to get out in the field and check your stand. Um, and uh, in terms of setting up for next year, it gives you a really good, uh, good time to maybe revisit your planter. Uh, if you're getting it custom planted, have that conversation. Why did you not get the population that you set out to do? Uh, were there some, uh, was there some insect pressure that maybe you didn't catch? Uh, some cutworms? Uh, there was all kinds of reasons why we didn't get the population that we wanted to, but um, really, good, uh, really good time to, uh, to reevaluate that yet again. This time of year, we also want to be, uh, be looking at uh, late season plant health and uh, just to have a look as to uh, what may be impacting our, our yield. Um, I've seen uh, quite a bit of gosses wilt in some areas. Uh, it's a recurring issue, uh, certainly in those stands that have corn on corn on corn. And uh, uh, we are starting to see it show up, uh, especially when, uh, when older genetics, older hybrids are being used that, uh, that do not have the, uh, the tolerance to, uh, to gosses that some of the newer genetics do. Um, so great time of year to uh, just walk through your corn and, and look for that. Um, you want to be careful that you don't uh, go into your field uh, that's infested with gosses and go into your neighbor's field. Um, it's, it is one of those diseases that can spread, so uh, please be, uh, be mindful of some biosecurity issues there. Um, but a uh, great time to scout your fields, look for that uh, late season intactness. And uh, as, it, as we're coming into uh, kind of a new purchasing season uh, in September, October, for some of those early buy opportunities. Um, maybe uh, consider uh, some of the newer genetics that, uh, that have a little more tolerance uh, to those issues and uh, provide you with that uh, stay green, late season intactness. Uh, and it's really that late season intactness that'll allow you to, uh, to fill these, uh, these large cobs and uh, to get the, uh, the test weight and the bushel weight uh, that you need to be successful uh, at the elevator uh, when it comes time to uh, select, your, uh, select your grain for some special markets and uh, to maybe get a little extra premium in the market. So, uh, so with that, uh, thank you. I hope everyone has a successful harvest and we'll see you next time.